The Rooted series has really driven us into three main disciplines, being in the Word of God, being in weekly worship with the community of God, and now we're leaning into you saying, wait a minute, there's a community even within that that you're supposed to be a part of, that small group community. And um, when, you, when, you, when you hold those three disciplines up against the wicked, the sinner, and the mocker, you recognize there's really you know, two different roads you can go down. One is a progression towards a more godly, intentional relationship. The other is a progression towards becoming the mocker. When we talked about a mocker, we talked today um, about someone who willfully hates and works against the counsel of God in Scripture, the people of God. They become people who love sin. They encourage people and tempt people to sin. And we recognize that Satan is the original mocker. He's the one who started in Genesis 3 saying, did God really say? Did God really say any questions God? In the temptation of Jesus, he, he goes through those first two temptations where he tempts Jesus with food, then he tempts him with power and influence and luxury. And then he comes at it from a different angle. And this is where we see the mockery of God um, really, oh, it just kind of ticks me off when I think of how he did it because it's so arrogant and opposed to God. When Satan says at the third and final temptation, when he says to Jesus, he spirits him to the top of the temple, which would have been the, the height of religious and faithful society in the Jewish culture and really for the world at that time. He spirits Jesus to the top and he says to him, jump, jump off the temple because it is written. And, and I want you to see the mocking tone of that. Satan uses the word of God against the son of God. And he says, jump for it is written for he will give his angels command or he will command his angels concerning you that you will literally not even stub your toe when you hit the ground. And Jesus replies, it says, which is this definitive statement where Jesus is kind of like throwing an elbow back at it saying, no, that's not what it says. That's not what God was saying. Scripture says, don't put your, the Lord your God to the test. And Jesus pushes back against the mocker. When we talk about the Rooted series, one of the goals of this series is to get you into a small group because you're going to be either eventually in a group of mockers who are openly opposed to, to God and his desires, or you're going to be in a faithful community that believes everything against the mocker in your life. And we have an adversary, the devil, who goes around working hard to undermine our value and our worth. He said, did God really say that you're loved, that you're redeemed, that you're good enough, that you're worthy? And he says that. And when we're alone, we don't know if we believe it. But when we are in a close community of God, a small group of people who study scriptures and know each other's life, we have other people who will stand up with us and say, no, we know the truth that you are, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are loved dearly by God and you are also someone who is purposeful in their life. My invitation to you in this today is to look at scripture and wrestle with these questions and ask yourself the question, what's my excuse for not getting faithfully involved in a group of people rooted in relationship around the person of Jesus Christ and then sent out missionally filled by his spirit according to his plan and purpose for the glory of Jesus Christ. That's the high calling of the church and you're a member of it. I encourage you, answer the questions that follow this and really wrestle with how do we make the most of this opportunity? Since you're already in a small group, how do we make the most of this unique gift of being known and called and purposeful in all we do? Can you think of a time where you have witnessed uh, the kind of mocking referred to in Psalm 1 where um, people mock <coughs> Christians or Jesus. Have you ever seen that? Sometimes making light of sin is much more subtle, but making light of it is still the heart of the mocker. How have you seen sin minimized in our culture? <laughs> I'm going to read this next question so that I can really make sure we get the heart of it. It says this, Ecclesiastes 4 says that two are better than one because if one falls, they can pick the other up. It also declares that one may be overpowered, but two can defend themselves. Have you ever had someone come to your aid and help you when you were being attacked by mockers or when you were facing a temptation?
Uh, I would like you to read Luke chapter 4 um, as a group. I have been referring back to this, uh, this text throughout this entire series and the three temptations of the Lord Jesus. Um, and we've done it in order to see what Jesus says about the word of God. Uh, worship and those who make fun of God. So we've held the temptation of Jesus kind of uh, against this wicked sinner, mocker. We've had those things held up for you in this. So um, in the last temptation, uh, Satan tries to use scripture against the Son of God, inviting Jesus to test God, to test his heavenly Father. Just like the previous two times, Jesus responds with the word of God, and Satan finally gives up. So I want to ask you the question, which one of the temptations, the food, the luxury, and the things of this life, or the recognition and the being adored, which one of the three temptations that Jesus faced most um, hits home with you? Have you ever known someone who has patiently endured mocking or ridicule or scorn and um, that person could have easily like squashed the person mocking them? They could have silenced the accuser in their life and um, gotten rid of it. Did the mocker say that it showed their weakness when you know it showed their mercy and strength? Look at uh, 2 Peter 3, 3 through 9. How has God shown love even to those who make fun of him and his faithful followers. What was your biggest fear in joining a group? I think it could be fun for your group to talk about this. What was the biggest fear you faced in joining? Extra question that's not in the packet. It's bonus footage. Um, here's my question. What fear keeps you from maybe answering the call to lead, uh, to facilitate or host a group when we have other people needing to join small groups and you've been in a group for a while? What keeps you from hearing the call or obeying the call to be a facilitator or a host to a new group of people? It's time for the wrap up. All right, you've had a great time in small group. I hope you had a wonderful time connecting with each other. I hope this series has blessed you. I don't know why, but it's really blessed my life. It's reminded me of the value of the word of God, the community gathered in worship, and, um, and really the, the sacredness of being part of a small group. I hope you have a great time together as friends and um, dearly loved by each other. I, I hope these groups... Um, Fill your life with a new and unexpected joy. Have a great week and we'll see you back in worship next week, Sunday or Monday. We're out.